Good afternoon, everyone. Trying not to create a spam fest on my channel and not trying to inundate you with videos, but I was out mowing the lawn today and I was thinking a little bit about this latest chill article that I did and all your responses and appreciate all the responses. And one thing that popped up into my mind when I was thinking about this time period that he used. He chose 1800 and in another article when he did gold he chose 1850 and it reminded me of an article by Ed Sakota in Market Wizards and in this article in Market Wizards they were interviewing Ed Sakota and he was talking about the necessity of systems changing and renewing currencies going away and being replaced by other currencies and one of the examples he used and I want to go over that real quick here he used an example of he was trying to prove how compound interest necessitates the death of currencies and the example he used was imagine if you take one penny compounded at three percent per year since the time of Christ how much money would you have so I just wanted to show that to you so you can get an idea of how that works now here's how I'm gonna do it I'm gonna take just your ordinary Windows calculator and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the time period that it takes to do a hundred multiples so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one times one hit the equals actually I'm sorry I need to do one plus one hit the equals I'm gonna hold it down and we'll see how long it takes to get a hundred because we're just going to try to get the time frame for a hundred so one two three four so that's roughly our pace I'm just going to use that pace to calculate I'm not going to sit here and click so you can get an idea so let's take our penny which is 0.01 times one point oh three that's three percent and we get this figure so I'm just gonna hold down and we're gonna go I'm gonna stop it before we go into exponentials because that's hard to calculate I'm gonna stop it before that but we'll just start going in increments of a hundred years so we'll hold it down one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and we're going to stop at thirteen. That's going to be thir the year thirteen hundred the reason I stopped there is because it goes into exponentials beyond this point and obviously it's going to be a number so large that you won't even be able to recognize it but we're at the year 1300 we've invested a penny at the time of Christ and it's been invested for 1300 years at 3 percent interest now let's look how much money we have we have 227 and the 442 is in the hundred thousands the 156 is the millions the 753 is the billions the 839 is the trillions and the 8 is a quadrillion so we've got 8.84 quadrillion dollars one penny invested at the time of Christ by the year 1300 would equal 8.84 quadrillion dollars so that's and and we didn't go to today it would be a number that is incalculable unrecognizable etc but what's the point the point is this that the reason why Ed Sakota brought up this example is that systems change one of the reasons that systems change is that these types of compound interest can't continue because they'll bankrupt the society you that's why you have currencies only lasting for certain periods of time to be replaced by other currencies it's not just that the governments are 
irresponsible. It's not just that things go wrong. It's that the nature of compound interest requires that currencies be debased and ultimately be discarded. So let's get back to our topic with our shill that we have here. And what is so disingenuous about his argument that I realized is that he's taking silver from 1800. Well, first of all, that should be a very strong message about the value of silver. The fact that silver is the only thing that exists since 1800. You can't find anything else. And I've gone through, I've got some other sites, and you can do these calculations yourself. I've got some other lists of some of the wealthiest people. We've got Cornelius Vanderbilt, and in 1877, his net worth was 105 million. Go ahead and do an 8% calculation on that. We can look at John Jacob Astor. John Jacob Astor had some $250,000 wealth in 1800. And by the time of his death in 1848, it had grown to $20 million. Now, go ahead and calculate that at 5 or 6 or 7% interest, what these people tell you they can return. But the point is this, that rather than proving that silver doesn't have a long-term return, what he's actually proven is that silver is the only thing that does have it. And all of these other paper instruments, whether they be stocks, bonds, insurance instruments such as annuities, etc., 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 all these promises that guarantee to pay you a set percentage year after year after year after year, they are destined to be bankrupted and be reset. And that's the stage we're in right now with silver. The reason why the price of silver is doing what it's doing right now is that we are approaching one of those resets, one of those currency resets where the old currency is about to be declared worthless and a new currency is going to take its place. And the only paper instruments that make their way through that eye of the needle to the next period are either those that are guaranteed by the government because insiders are connected to them or gold and silver. These are the only two things. So actually the argument that he used about silver from the 1800s is actually the strongest argument you can make for silver because it's the only thing that exists since the 1800s. All the other things are gone because the systems have to reset and it's mathematically impossible for those types of returns to continue over those periods of times without the system resetting. So I wanted to add that to the last video I had so you can understand that this is a disingenuous argument to compare the returns of the precious metals over hundreds of years to financial assets that simply go out of existence. And we'll talk to you next time.